Welcome back to week six, Ocean Currents, and in video two, we are going to move forward and talk about how the major currents in the oceans move, um, patterns we see, things like that. So um, how do they move? Well, we have surf water, surface water currents and deep water currents and then what's called the global conveyor belt. So we'll move through each three of these three um, in this video. So the first thing we're going to talk about are surface currents and we're going to use that Geo Atlas program that Frank has let us use uh, for this course to kind of explore those surface currents. So we have two different things. We have gyres uh, which are closed loops in an ocean basin and then we have these circumpolar currents that flow around the globe. So two major different types of currents that we see. Um, and then we have currents that kind of loop around uh, within uh, one much larger um, basin. And then we have these small little spin-offs that happen uh, with those gyres. So let's look at that um, media here, that GeoAtlas program. And let's pull up the movement. So click on those arrows. And we can see, uh, if we kind of look closer here at the North Atlantic, what we have here, uh, and remember the shading here also corresponds to speeds, so the darker blues are faster, the kind of lighter blues or whites are slower. Um, so when we look at the um, uh, North Atlantic, we've got a gyre here that travels in a loop, circular pattern around that ocean. Uh, we've got both the um, Gulf Stream that travels up from the equator across over to Europe, and then we have the Canary Current that takes cool water down um, from Europe to the equator. So you got this warm water moving north and then cool water moving south. So taking that heat at the equator and transferring it, transferring it up to those poles. And you can see the same thing happen in the South Atlantic as well. We've got this current that pulls that warm water south, and then we've got um, cooler water being brought back to the equator to be warmed back up again. Another gyre in the South Atlantic. We look over in the Pacific. I know it's kind of split here on the edge, but South Pacific, we've got um, gyre moving cool um, to warm and around. And then over here again, we've got um, that uh, west wind drift, California current, and then um, moving back across the open ocean back over towards uh, Japan and Asia. So these are gyres, circular pattern that exists uh, within these ocean basins. Um, we also have these um, circumpolar currents. So down here at the bottom around Antarctica, you can see we've got these arrows that just go straight across the map. Well, if we were to put this on a globe, we would notice that those arrows just go round and round and round in one big loop around um, <clears throat> Antarctica. And that's what we call a circumpolar current that just goes around and around the globe, doesn't necessarily um, go in a, a nice closed circular pattern in an ocean basin, but actually travels in and out of several. So one other thing I wanted to note uh, for you guys in these larger gyres that we see, uh, if I pull that um, NASA video up again, what we notice in, so here we're traveling across Europe to um, North America, and if I pause it here, it's a little dark, but here is the major current, the major Gulf Stream current traveling across. You can also see in certain spots these kind of spin-offs that happen. You get these I play it again, these little curly Q patterns that exist. Um, we have these kind of eddies that develop, that spin off of that much larger current. And here you can see another one down here, the current comes up through uh, by Cuba, and then we have these spin offs that develop. Here's another one as well. So within these larger ocean currents, these gyres, we can have these spin offs or these eddies that develop in the ocean as well. And here you can see a whole bunch of them that that form, which is pretty neat. And that's uh, a spot where, especially along the coastline, early mariners had to know about these because otherwise they could get stuck in these eddies and be traveling the wrong direction. Um, and they wanted to move south, they would end up getting stuck and they'd be moving to the north, which 
not exactly ideal. So those are our surface currents. Gyres in the lar closed loops in these large ocean basins like the North Atlantic and the South Atlantic and those eddies that develop um, off of those larger gyres and then the circumpolar currents that flow around the globe. So next what I want to talk about are these deep water currents and your book has some great diagrams uh, that describe these things like upwelling and downwelling that exist in the ocean. So what happens um, with upwelling, for instance, what we get um, is in places like along the Peru-Chile coast, we have winds that are flowing across the land and over um, the surface of the ocean and pulling water away from the coast. So pulling that surface water away. And so what happens here is because we're pulling that surface water away, we're pulling cooler water up to the surface. So we got a change in pressure moving water in one direction and just like if you were to pull on a rope, the rope at the very end is going to follow that, that surface rope that you have attached to your hand. It's going to pull that water up. So we have this upwelling of cool, nutrient-rich water in some areas. So we have water moving from deep inside the, in, in the ocean, moving up to the surface. It's usually cooler. It can be uh, slightly higher salinity sometimes. And um, it's going to have lots of nutrients in it as well, so it can support lots of life. Uh, downwelling is the opposite, where you have water sinking down into the ocean. So what happens there is we have water that is very, very dense, and it's very, very cool, and it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. So we don't have any wind currents that are driving this one, it's just density driven. And then we have horizontal movement of intermediate and bottom water that can happen as well. So we might have the surface water moving in one direction, but deep down inside the ocean, water can be moving in a different direction, which is pretty interesting. So what does that look like? Well, let's look at that GeoAtlas program again, and here we can look at the deep ocean currents, and we have uh, lots of different things um, on here. So um, the green areas, which I have highlight here, are where we have upwelling dominant. So we have cool water l rising up to the surface. Um, in these pink areas, downwelling. So you notice that the downwelling is happening in the cooler parts of the globe. So that's where we have cool, dense water sinking down to the bottom of the ocean. And then we've got these kind of darker areas, or, or, or sorry, these lighter areas are what we call western boundary currents and if you notice here they're moving from um, one edge of a continent to another so we've got um, boundary current going all the way along the edge of these continents on the edge of this continent and on the edge of this one so here we've got downwelling dominant in these two areas moves up the coast upwells downwelling down here moves up the coast and upwells it's so kind of connected in some places. And then this darker blue, these are slower moving bottom waters that are traveling from one place to another. Um, so I can also put these movement arrows on here so you can see the direction in which each of these currents are moving in. So in the Atlantic, we don't have an area where we have dominant upwelling necessarily, but we have this water moving. Um, we have a downwelling here in the purple areas and that water is moving down, 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 down to the poles and over some of it gets caught in that, um, that circumpolar current and can actually travel all the way around Antarctica. Some of it can move up to these upwelling zones as well. Some of it just slow, moves much slower on the bottom of the ocean surface. So pretty neat. The other thing that we can click on here is to look at a profile. So if we looked at a slice at 20 degrees west in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, we're going from Antarctica on the right to Greenland on the left, and you can see these different zones here. So the dark, dark blues are really cool bottom water, so water that's traveling along the, the bottom of the ocean. And what we have here is around Antarctica, we've got that downwelling zone, cool, dense saline water moves down to the bottom of the ocean, travels up further towards the north. Some of that can get 
pulled back up into that um, kind of intermediate water and be transported back the other way. Uh, and then when it reaches the surface, that's where we have those surface waters dominating and moving um, uh, the water through those gyres in the different ocean basins. So pretty complex circulation patterns in these oceans. Some pretty interesting stuff. If we were to take a slice in other parts of the ocean, probably see very similar stuff where surface waters are moving in a very different direction than what's happening at the bottom. So why is that? Well, surface, we've got winds. Those winds can dominate the direction. And then in the bottom of the ocean, it's mostly density driven. So two different scenarios there. Pretty neat. So that's the deep water. We've got upwelling, downwelling, and then movement of horizontal, uh, horizontal movement of intermediate and bottom water. The last bit of the picture is what's called the global conveyor belt. So this is kind of the whole picture. What we have here is if we put all this stuff together, the surface currents, the, the deep water currents, we can get an overall um, movement pattern of water from deeper ocean to surface and around the globe. So here's uh, one picture you can look at, the warm surface flow uh, kind of migrating through the Pacific uh, into the Indian Ocean and then over into the Atlantic, downwelling into the deep Atlantic, moving uh, and splitting in this case uh, up towards the Indian Ocean getting back into the surface flow. Uh, the other split going towards the cool subsurface flow, so in that deep ocean near Antarctica, and then coming back up into the Pacific Ocean. You can also see this in um, this Geo Atlas program. If we click on features, see that same current. So this is that global conveyor belt. So this is the bulk of a circulation of seawater from the surface to the seafloor and back to the surface. <clears throat> so we have um, this happening because that surface water cools, sinks, and moves towards the poles and then it rises in these places where we have the major upwelling zones. And this could take over a thousand years, so pretty long circulation time for that, that water to get from the deeper areas to the surface and then back down to those deeper areas. It's pretty interesting stuff. Global conveyor belt, moving water all around the ocean, connecting these different gyres to one another over thousands of years. All right, so those are how major ocean currents in the Earth's ocean move. So surface currents, deep water currents, and then kind of combining them into that global ocean conveyor belt. So we're going to come back in the next video, talk about what controls this motion. Mentioned a few things already, but we're going to get into more detail in the next video. See you then.